I think many consider the half diminished or the minor seven flat five chord the most difficult chord to improvise over. But it's also very common, it is in a lot of songs, so you do need to deal with it. And often I hear people saying, oh, you just need to play this scale and then you can run up and down that, but that's not really solving any problems either. So in this video, I'm going to go over some different structures, arpeggios and melodic ideas that really do work with this chord that can really help you improve how you improvise over a minor seven flat five chords, but also just minor two five ones in general. And they're actually not that difficult. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. Let's first construct a minor seven flat five chord and look at how that sits in a minor two five one. And then I'm going to cover some of the material that you can use. So that's arpeggios, triads, quartal arpeggios and pentatonic scales. Then I'm also shortly going to discuss why I don't think that the Locrian natural two is just sort of a carpet solution that's gonna cover all your half diminished chords. This is pretty simple. We have an E minor seven, so that would be E, G, B and D. And then we want to turn that into an E minor seven flat five or an E half diminished. So that would be E, G, B flat and D. And that's of course then this chord. The chord symbol that we use is either writing out the minor seven flat five or noting that it's sort of related to the diminished, but it's not completely diminished because the seventh in this chord is a flat seven, but it's not a diminished seven. So we write the symbol for diminished, which is like a small circle. And then we put a line through that to note that it's half diminished. This is one of the few places where my Danish heritage is actually an unfair advantage in learning jazz harmony. In fact, it's, it's, probably, it's probably the only place where that's an unfair advantage. But that's because the symbol for a half diminished chord is in fact a letter in the Danish alphabet, so it's already on my keyboard. The difference between the diminished and the half diminished chord is the seventh. So in this case, we have the E minor seven flat five or E half diminished. And here we have a flat seven, so a D. But if you have a diminished chord, then you have a diminished seventh. So this is actually moved down another half step from D to D flat. And then you have E, G, B flat and D flat, this chord. In the examples in this video, then the minor seven flat five chord is the two chord in a minor two five one, and that would be this progression. There's nothing wrong with just the basic minor seven flat five arpeggio. You probably already know it and you're already using it. So one of the most efficient things to do is to check out some more options with it. You can start with just a basic arpeggio like this. But you can easily expand your options by exploring some different ways of playing those four notes. Something like this. If you look at the notes of an E half diminished chord, then that would be E, G, B flat and D. So the top three notes here, G, B flat and D, that's a G minor triad. And that's of course a great structure or arpeggio to use in your solos. In fact, this technique is something you want to know for all the chords that you want to improvise over. And this is of course also useful for your comping, because if you want to play an E half diminished chord, you can use a G minor triad as a rootless version of that. So then you have stuff like... On a minor seven flat five chord, then the arpeggio from the flat five is a great way to emphasize both the flat five and the 11th on the chord. So in the case of our E half diminished, the flat five is B flat. The arpeggio that you have there is a B flat major seven. And this works really well to get the B flat and the A, the 11th out there. Uh, you do have the F in there and that can be tricky, but since it's kind of buried in the middle of the arpeggio, then it's pr pretty easy to work with still and get some really solid lines like this. The Magic Arpeggio is a modified version of the Major 7 Arpeggio from the previous example. So for the E half diminished, we had the B flat Major 7 Arpeggio from the flat five, so. But we had the F in there and that flat nine, we can get rid of that by changing the Arpeggio into a B flat Major 7 flat five, so. And then you can use that without having the F in there. And that's actually also just an arpeggio that you can create some really great sounds with some great melodies. So for that reason alone, it's also worthwhile checking out. An example of that could be something like this. Of 
course it makes sense to choose arpeggios and structures that you want to use in your solo so that they don't contain notes that don't fit with the chord. At the same time, I think there is maybe a little bit too much of a trend that people want to use low and natural 2 on half diminished chords because it doesn't have any avoid notes. And that's just not a really strong strategy for a few reasons. First, you want to worry more about what you want to play and not so much about what you shouldn't play. Secondly, I think you definitely want to choose a scale and a sound on a chord that's going to take the context into account. A minor 7 flat 5 chord is mostly not just an isolated chord that doesn't relate to anything else. In fact, all the examples here are minor 2, 5, 1 examples, so it is in a minor context and that natural 9 is maybe not the best sound all the time. At least it's something that you want to choose. Finally, I also think that most of the time when people choose for this strategy, then they just want to run up and down the scale. And yeah, that's, that's just, I mean, that's just, yeah. That's just. I think a much better way to use low green natural 2 is to say, okay, this is a sound I want and I really want to emphasize that natural 9 because it's a different sound, it's not what we expect, and then I can use it in a musical way. Leave a comment if you don't agree with me. Or if you do. For any chord that you're improvising over, if you're coming up short when you're looking for material to use, some interesting arpeggios, then chordal arpeggios is just a great place to check out because it's just never the first thing that we think about. And for this chord, so we have the E half diminished, the chordal arpeggios in the scale would be this. And a line using some chordal arpeggios on the half diminished chord sounds like this. So here I'm using the chordal arpeggio from B flat and also the one from A. But there are more you can use. You could also certainly use the one from E, so. And maybe also the one from D. Pentatonic scales are always great options to get a slightly different sound on top of a chord. And you can find some really great pentatonic solutions for most chords. Also for the minor seven flat five chord. In this case, we have the Locrian pentatonic, which is essentially like a minor pentatonic with a flat five. But you could also look at it as being the arpeggio, so E, half diminished, with an added 11th. And then you have this scale. A line using this scale sounds like this. The way that I'm playing the pentatonic scale is two notes per string because that's how we often play minor pentatonic or pentatonic scales in general. And uh, that's really useful also for just creating lines and that's also what I'm doing in these examples. I'm really using the two notes per string aspect of it to create the melody. And I think that's just a great way to come up with some new melodies. If you want to check out more about minor seven flat five or half diminished chords, and especially how they can be used as superimpositions on other chords to get the sound of altered dominance and Lydian dominance, then check out this video. That's a great way to expand on what I've covered in this lesson and apply it to a lot of other chords.